Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today I just wanted to go over the function of a thermostatic expansion valve. All right, so you have high pressure, high temperature, liquid refrigerant entering into the metering device, which in this case, thermostatic expansion valve, TEV or TXV. Okay, you have several pressures that are that are coming into play here. Okay, you have the pressure coming in. All right, that's the the pressure coming in in liquid. All right, then you have this is an external equalization port. And this is actually measuring the pressure on the suction line <clears throat> after the refrigerant goes through the evaporator coil. All right, so this TXV uh, is measuring superheat. It's usually measuring about 14 degrees of superheat is what it wants. And what that's going to do is that's going to keep the compressor safe. So say this loses some superheat by the time it gets to the compressor. It's a vapor compressor. It needs to have vapor. So if it does not have vapor... And it, say it came out of here at only 6 degrees superheat. By the time it got to the compressor, maybe it lost its superheat. You know, it could have gained it, but maybe it lost it. All right. So if it did, then that has a chance to turn into a liquid, and that would sludge the compressor, and that would be no good. All right. So we want to have a 14 degree uh, superheat, roughly, uh, with the metering device, uh, just to overheat the vapor a little bit, just to make sure we have complete vapor coming back. Other than that, it doesn't want to have something higher uh, than 14 degrees, like 16, 18, 20, because then you're losing your cooling effect in here, all right? Because um, you have 50% liquid, 50% vapor, say, in the middle of the evaporator coil. After that, it turns into a complete vapor, and the temperature increase in the vapor form as it's absorbing heat from the house, that's called the superheat, all right? And so this TXV is measuring this actual superheat. All right, the other thing that, that it takes into play is actually the pressure coming off of this TXV bulb. All right, so it has the pressure coming in, the external equalization pressure, and the bulb pressure. The TXV here, this one was for an R22 system, so it has an R22 tag on it, which also means that when you buy a TXV, it has refrigerant inside of it in the bulb uh, the he from the head to the TXV bulb. All right, and as this heats up, as we know, things expand and cause more pressure, okay? If this cools down, it's less pressure. So what happens is the hotter that this is, it tells the TXV, it pushes it open more, all right, and allows more refrigerant into the evaporator coil to have more of a cooling effect because it's reading too high of a superheat over on the suction line, all right? And the reason that we have an external equalization port is just say it used the back pressure instead of the external equalization port, we are losing some pressure uh, difference across the coil a little bit. Even if it's a, a PSI, 1 PSI or 2 PSI, that makes a great difference you know, in efficiency. All right, so the external equalization port gives it that more accurate reading because your bulb is usually mounted within a few inches of your external equalization port. All right, so you can think about this bulb as a little mini refrigerant bottle. All right, it's, it wants to be mounted upright, okay? So you have liquid in the bottom of the bulb and vapor on the top, and this vapor, uh, when it's heated, exerts pressure to the TXV. If it's horizontal, that's okay too, uh, but you want to put the um, tube that goes back to the TXV bulb up, all right? Because that's where the vapor is going to be applied, all right? And then you can mount it to the suction line. Make sure that you're mounting it somewhere where it's, say not on the bottom, all right, and it's usually 10 or 2 o'clock is usually the best spots to mount it at, all right, or if you're going to have to mount it vertically, you can mount it, you know, vertically like this, okay, and you strap it on with copper straps, or you can use stainless steel hose clamp, but you've got to make sure that you do not over tighten that stainless steel hose clamp, us, you know, they don't give them to us because people tend to over tighten these, and they crush the bulb, and then there's a leak in there, and then they say, oh, no, my TXV is bad, was actually because somebody over tightened it and actually created a leak right there. If this runs out of refrigerant, then there will be no more pressure to apply to the TXV in order to open. So if you see a suction pressure that's down lower, that's because there was no opening pressure due to the refrigerant loss in the TXV bulb. All right. Well, I hope that helps and hope you enjoyed yourself. And we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.